Chapter 30, Inheritance and Euthanasia. I hadn't yet recovered from my deep surprise when Celestio approached us to inform Narcissa, our sister Paulina wishes to see her sick father in Ward 5. I thought I'd better consult with you before granting her request, because the patient is still experiencing an acute crisis. Showing her characteristic demeanor of kindness, Narcissa replied, Send her in here right away. She has the minister's permission, since she has been devoting all her leisure time to the job of reconciling her family members. As the messenger hastily took his leave, the kind nurse said to me, You'll see what a devoted daughter she is. Less than a minute later, Paulina was before us. She looked slim and pretty in her light tunic woven of luminous silk. Her facial features portrayed angelic beauty, but her eyes displayed extreme concern. Narcissa introduced us politely, and probably feeling that perhaps she could trust me, Paulina asked somewhat anxiously, "'How's Dad, my friend?' "'A little better,' said the nurse, "'but he is still strongly unbalanced.' "'That's too bad,' replied the young woman. "'Neither he nor the others will give up their present mental attitudes. "'Always the same hate.' The same disgust. Narcissa invited us to accompany her, and a few minutes later I was looking at an old man with a disagreeable face, with his hard stare, disheveled hair, deep wrinkles, and withdrawn lips. He inspired more pity than sympathy. However, I endeavored to overcome the inferior vibrations that had taken hold of me in order to see beyond the wretch to the spiritual brother. My feelings of repulsion disappeared and my thoughts began to clear. I applied the lesson to myself. How had I arrived at the Ministry of Assistance? My desperate appearance must have been horrible. When we examine someone else's misfortune while bearing in mind our own imperfections, there is always room for fraternal love in our hearts. The old patient didn't have one kind word to say to his daughter, who greeted him tenderly. His harsh and rebellious stare made him look like a caged human beast. "'Are you feeling better, Daddy?' she asked with a daughter's extreme caring. "'Oh, no!' the patient cried in a guttural voice. "'I can't get over the treachery. I have no peace of mind. I can still see him by my side injecting the deadly poison.' Don't say that, Daddy, she delicately entreated. Remember that Adelberto came to our home as a son sent by God. My son, shouted the wretch, never, never. He's an unforgivable criminal, a son of hell. Paulina now spoke tearfully. Daddy, let us heed Jesus' lesson saying that we should love one another. We go through family experiences on the earth in order to acquire true spiritual love, but it is also essential for us to realize that there is only one truly eternal Father, who is God. But the Lord of life grants us fatherhood and motherhood so that we may learn unsustained fraternity. Our terrestrial homes are like cauldrons for purifying our sentiments. They are like temples of sublime unity as we evolve towards universal solidarity. We have to struggle and suffer a great deal before we can rightly call one another brother and sister. The whole creation is but one family under the providential blessing of one sole father. As he listened to her very sweet voice, the patient broke into convulsive weeping. Forgive Adelberto, her daddy. Try to see him not as just a reckless son, but also as a brother in need of enlightenment. I was in our home today and witnessed serious problems. Right here from this bed, you were enveloping all of them in fluids of bitterness and incomprehension, and they are doing the same to you. The subtle vibrations of thought reach their target no matter how far away they may be. The hateful and discordant exchange of thoughts brings ruin and suffering to souls. Mom was so filled with anguish that she had to be taken to a mental hospital a few years ago. Amalia and Casilda have sued Adelberto and Agenor over the huge amount of material property you accumulated. It's a terrible scene, but its shadow would diminish if your stubborn mind didn't think about revenge all the time. Here you are in a deplorable state. 
Back on Earth, Mom is crazy, and the kids are mixed up and hate each other bitterly. In the middle of such unbalanced minds of fortune and money, but what good is it if there isn't even one atom of happiness for anyone? But I left my family a great fortune, interrupted the unhappy old man rancorously. I was looking out for everyone's welfare. Paulina didn't let him finish and continued, We don't always know how to tell what might be beneficial when it comes to transitory riches. If you had assured their future by guaranteeing them mental peace and honest work instead... Your efforts would have been a great deal of help. But, Dad, sometimes we get used to accumulating money out of a spirit of vanity and ambition. Wanting to live above others, we only concern ourselves with the external aspects of life. Very few concern themselves with acquiring worthwhile knowledge, qualities of tolerance, the light of humility, and the blessings of understanding. We impose our whims on others. We shun away from serving the Father, and we forget the act of polishing our spirit. No one is born on the planet merely to pile up money in safes or accumulate bank accounts. It's only natural that human life demands that we make provisions for the future, and it is right that such provisions not lack faithful stewards who know how to administer them wisely. But nobody can be a steward for our Father while filled with greed and plans of domination. Such a way of life has ruined our home. When I was there, I tried in vain to render spiritual help to our home environment, while you and Mom sacrificed yourselves to increase your fortune. Malia and Casilda disdained useful work. They were idlers of high society and married idlers like themselves for financial gain. Agenor dropped out of school and spent his time in bad company. Edelberto graduated as a physician but was completely indifferent to medicine. He practiced his profession only rarely and visited his office more out of curiosity than anything. They all ruined their beautiful spiritual potential, distracted by easy money and attached to the idea of their inheritance. The patient took on a look of horror and added, That damned Edelberto! criminal and ingrate. He murdered me without mercy when I still needed to straighten out the terms of my will. Bastard. Oh, please, Daddy, have compassion on your son. Forgive and forget. The old man, however, went on swearing loudly. The young woman was about to argue, but Narcissa gave her a meaningful glance and called Salsustio to help with the critical patient. Paulina kept still while stroking her father's brow and trying hard to hold back her tears. I was greatly impressed as I left the ward with Narcissa and Paulina a few minutes later. The two friends exchanged confidences for a few minutes. Paulina graciously said goodbye, but her rightly worried eyes were filled with grief. When we were alone again, Narcissa kindly explained, Inheritance cases are extremely complicated as a rule. With rare exceptions, they are an enormous burden both to testators and legatees. In this case, however, it doesn't only involve the problem of inheritance, but euthanasia as well. The ambition for money created problems and misunderstandings in Paulina's family. Avaricious parents generally have spendthrift children. I went to our friend's home when her brother, Edelberto, a distinguished-looking doctor, used the so-called easy death on his nearly dead father. We did our best to prevent it, but to no avail. The poor young man was in financial trouble and was anxious to hurry the death of his father. And now we can see the results of his imprudence, hatred, and infirmity. With an expressive gesture, Narcissa concluded, God created beings in heaven, but we insist on transforming ourselves into diabolical spirits, creating our own individual hells.